programming languages go back at least 50 years. Uh, you know, you, you can look all the way back to the 50s where, where some of the ancient languages like Fortran and COBOL were created. Microsoft itself was founded on a programming language called BASIC. The first product, literally, that the company created uh, was Microsoft BASIC. When Bill started the company, his first product was a BASIC interpreter, was a language product, was a tool. Right from day one, we've always been thinking about Microsoft as a platform company. People were writing uh, the classic basic for Apple IIe. You're at a command prompt and you type line numbers 10, print my name, line number 20, go to line number 10, so you'd see your name printed constantly. And you know, that was the coolest thing people had seen at the time. I think basic is an absolutely terrible language. It's a language that has always been terrible. It is nothing more than Fortran with a dress on it, and it's a language that should be dragged outside and shot. <laughs> it's not good. Whenever anybody else in the software industry wanted to know where we thought things were going, you know, they'd come and talk to us. Because our vision, we shared. We didn't view that as some competitive edge. We just wanted to talk about it and uh, uh, get other people to share the same ideas so that they would help make it all come true. In the late 1980s, Microsoft had a giant dominant product. It was MS-DOS. It was this green screen operating system. It was the franchise. And they knew that it was going to have to go away. And they knew that they were going to have to replace it with something. But then Microsoft and IBM got together to build the, the successor operating system. It was called OS2. It was this enormous production. And it was the anointed heir apparent within Microsoft. It was considered a product of strategic value, and it was given uh, the lion's share of the new development resources that was going on. I mean, this, it was huge. And in the meantime, off in one corner, they had this tiny little kind of run to the litter named Windows that was not a strategic application, was not part of the strategic department within the organization. At the time, Bill was very, very frustrated with IBM. He didn't like working with them. He didn't like their architectural style. He was very forthcoming in his frustration of working with IBM. We think today of Windows as this enormous thing, this huge marketing success, this huge dominant operating system that's on every computer out there. And at the time, it was simply not true. At the time, there were many um, competing uh, windowing systems, and there were several competing operating systems. There were no clear winners. And what happened was Windows 3.0 came out and broke the 640K barrier. And it did so in with a lighter touch than OS 2 did. It really stole the thunder from OS 2. And Gates knew it, and Gates ended up cutting IBM loose and saying, take OS 2, <laughs> go, take it and go. Our strategy can be summarized in one word, Windows. The thing about Windows back in the early days was it was a, an enormous tease. It hit its technical marks, but it was such a piece of crap when you had to use it. I mean, it, it was a, the kind of software that only a mother could love. When Windows 3.1 came out, it, it revolutionized the OS. It was obvious that the idea of some graphical user interface was going to work. Everyone adopted it quickly. Uh, the trick was we, we never had a graphical operating system, so the concepts we learned in school and programming didn't apply to what we're using on these PCs. They call me the father of Visual Basic because I invented the visual part of Visual Basic that you see on screen, the direct manipulation stuff, the, the dynamically expandable palette of controls that allows you to paint an interface. The proper shell for Windows didn't really exist, and there, and there was no way you could create one shell for Windows that would satisfy everybody. What you needed was a, a way for people to build their own shells. You needed a shell construction set, and that was kind of the, the, the aha moment, the, the epiphany that that allowed me to, to build uh, Ruby. I called it Tripod in its first incarnation. The Tripod prototype was basically the program that I wrote in order to demonstrate that this 
cool new visual direct manipulation program could be written. And I showed that to a lot of people in the industry and they all said the same thing to me. They said, boy, this is pretty nice. Why don't you show this to Microsoft? I'm thinking, yeah, right. Like Microsoft would care about something like this. Bill had uh, these guys that we called, we called them Gates clones, who were just like him, you know. And they would, uh, they would talk just like him, and they had all his mannerisms. They looked just like him, too. It was amazing. And finally, we got a, uh, an interview with one of, these, one of these guys. I started giving my standard demo, you know. And so I started going through about five minutes into it. He stops, and he just pushes his head back in the chair. And he says, Bill's got to see this. I had done some really cool drag and drop stuff and where you go over to a pallet and pick up a control and drag it onto a window and drop it and the control would instantiate and then you could, you could rubber band a line from that control to another control and, uh, and the two would be connected and you could wire them together. And, and when you dragged something across the screen, it dragged across in true um, in true animation, so it was actually doing full clipping of, in the background in, on a 386. I mean, this was, this was pretty sophisticated stuff for back then. I mean, it was a hack code. It was not the kind of stuff that you could ship. But Bill looked at it and he goes, when I, when I showed him this animation for the first time, he goes, how did you do that? <laughs> I loved it. So I looked at it and I gave him the only answer I could. I said, it's magic. If you wanted quickly executing code or you wanted to do something that was was, was very complex and needed a power of the language, you would use C. If you wanted ease of access, you would use BASIC. And then we started to see windowing operating systems appearing. And so as people wanted to build these graphical applications, they started having to do a lot of work to get these done. When I originally sold this application to Bill Gates in 88, it was going to be the shell for Windows and it was going to be user-facing, and it had a very, very simple language that I had put into it. And so we introduced a, a product that was uh, Codename Thunder that eventually became Visual Basic, and it kicked off the whole market behind rapid application development. Much to my surprise, a, a year or so later, Visual Basic appeared in the marketplace to great critical acclaim and commercial success. If you are going for the best, <laughs> Visual Basic is the fastest way to build applications bar none. The idea is simple. You take, you take the language that you already understand, English, and you make it simple for people to graphically build drag and drop applications um, visually. One of the most interesting things about Visual Basic 1.0 was that you could actually sort of draw pictures to describe what you wanted done, or you could just kind of drop what you wanted on the screen and the code would magically sort of be in the back and then you could hook it together how you wanted. So it was, at the time, it was called visual programming. But it just made it easy where anybody could build a, a simple Windows application. And Windows applications really took off from that perspective. That was really what Visual Basic introduced was the opportunity to take it from the CS arena, from this place where it seemed like you should wear a white lab coat and you should have all this training. You should be able to code these things and do things during a very strict methodology. It made it so you could say, look, I've got a business problem that I need to have solved, and look, this tool's simple enough that I can solve it. People could just build applications in a couple hours and help them do their job better, and it was all about productivity. VB really revolutionized the application development platform because it enabled the masses. And, and still, you can argue to this day that VB.net has enabled gazillions of programmers around the world to build software. It's a very different thing from what I had originally uh, set it out to be. And so, you know, I tell the story, it's like, it's like sending your son off to college and he comes back graduating with honor summa cum laude in a sex change operation. And you have to go, oh, you know, that's my boy, I mean my girl, you know. You, you have to take your, your pride in, in, in their accomplishments. And so, so I am the father of Visual Basic, regardless of its gender. <laughs>